Hello. So let me pop my chat out here. Game time can happen Oops. anytime. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I was just sorting through some of these. I have a ton just so that I can explain a few things that I have found out. I am new to this, so this is all experimental. <clears throat> nice to see you. It's game time, yeah. <laughs> Got your uh, list of questions or <laughs> even suggestions because I can do them. So, I have, what I like to do, um, now what we're going to be using today is the Akua inks. I'm mad rush getting stuff ready here. Just hold your horses for a minute. Well, I... Here's what, this is a Akua Integro, Integlio, and it's a printing ink, and it is a soy-based ink that is water-soluble, so you can clean up with soap and water. Now, you have to use soap in it, though, because if you just use water, it actually stiffens the ink, so it makes it harder to clean. So you have to have soap in it. Um, they're very economical. You can get the beginner set. I think it's about $35. And they're, it's very thick. It's kind of like um, heavy body paint. And you can leave the jar open and it'll never skim over. Now they do suggest to mix uh, your paints before you use them because sometimes they, uh, certain pigments settle and you'll find um, the oils at the top of your jar. Very pigmented. And the um, special thing about these is that they do not dry on non-porous surfaces. The way it dries is by absorption. So printer's papers are the best, but you can use, I have used, I'll show you in a minute, copy paper. It does give a, a nice print. Um, a little more absorbent papers give you more intense color. And you can also use these, just not on your jelly plate, but you can also do dry point printing and lithographs and um, block printing with these. Um, stamps, works great with stamps. Hey, Lita, Devin, good to see you. Um, I just own two. So I use two. When I want to use a bunch of colors, like I've really been experimenting, <laughs> um, I have found out that where did I put it? If you want to use more than one color, say, you can use these uh, transparencies. Just put it on something hard. You could tape it down onto a wood block or something like that. And these do not dry. 
I've had this on here for a week and it's not dry. Now you can wipe them off too. If you want to change it, you can wipe with them off. Yeah, they do not. And also I have found deli paper. It does not work on because there is a wax in it and it stops it from drying. So here's a deli paper that I printed two weeks ago. It's still wet. Um, so if you have acrylic paint on your papers, it will not work on that either because it, it is a plastic surface then. So it's not going to dry. Same with your stencils. They will not dry on your stencil. So you can either leave them or you can just wipe them with a baby wipe. They're very easy to clean. That's the one thing I really like about these is you just throw them in your sink or have a bucket of water beside you with some soap in it. And uh, you can wipe them down very easily with soap and water and your rollers stay nice. You just have to take your baby wipe after each. Um, now you can have different rollers for different colors if you want. I just use one roller and I just wipe it and it comes off. Or you, I, most of it comes off. I usually roll it on a piece of newsprint or newspaper and it comes off right away. So there's no buildup caking of your uh, brayer, which is great. Same with your um, jelly prints or gel plates. They do not um, build up any kind of layer. Can you layer them once they have dried? Yes, you can. So this is just butcher paper. So these are many colors on top of each other. And the drying time is almost very, like I, I print it, put it aside, print another one, then I can come back to this one and print on it again. They do not take very long to dry. I was expecting that I would have to wait, you know, hours for them to dry. They don't, they, they're very quick. And that depends on the amount of ink you put on your plate. So if you put a large amount of ink on your plate, then you're going to have more oil in your paper, which will, depending on the paper you have, will take longer to dry. And if it's a thin paper, you have to put it in between, say, blotting paper or a newsprint or um, newspapers. And that newspaper will soak up the uh, residue oil that's in the paper, but it won't remove the ink. Uh, do I have a special cloth? Nope, just a uh, regular dishcloth or terry, old um, terry cloth towels. Um, as I'm doing it, I just use baby wipes. These are the uh, no-name Kirkland ones. They're non-perfume, they don't have soap in them or anything, um, and paper towels. And they, it comes off your hands very easily. doesn't stain your hands. Um, let's see, can you layer it? Um, okay, will the layer on top of the layer, dried layer of the Akua stay wet? No, it will eventually soak into the paper also. Um, if there, if your first layer had a lot of paint on it and it's not quite dry, then you, you'll get a different effect on the second layer, which will look, um, let me see, I'll show you. I did a lot of playing, as you can see. <laughs> so 
Hmm. Okay, uh, just for instance, I don't know if you can see this. It kind of looks like there's a, see this little haloing around this leaf here? That's because there was too much paint on it. So it kind of gets that effect and you don't get as crisp um, a line if you say you're printing with a very fine detailed stamp or a leaf, that type of thing. So you got to keep your layers thin. Um, I found in one session, three layers is about the max I can go. And then I have to put them in between newspaper to get rid of the excess oil. And then I can take those, say, the next day and start doing more on it. As long as the oil has been um, absorbed out with another blotter paper. Uh, can you... Uh... I think I recognize some of those patterns. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. This is a good image. Well. Yeah. Yeah, these are, I just use them all the time. Um, and it is a different way of using your stencils also. Um, it's a totally different way of thinking than your acrylic ink. Okay, P does that sometimes for that puckering or heavy line type print. Yeah, um, almost dendritic, uh, dendritic look. I tried that with this paint, it doesn't work. Um, but it will take lines Okay, so this is what I got. This is a plant, a weed actually. And it takes the line really well around the, um, this is just the butcher paper. So it did take all the very intricate little bits. Um, this is cardstock. So here you can see some of the see some of the marks around the edge here. That's from the paint too much paint. Or this might have a sizing on it that takes a little longer for the paint to go into the paper. So sometimes you have to leave your paper on a little bit longer. Um, now here's the print. Uh, this is on Bristol paper. I found Bristol paper really does a nice print. So there's the leaves that it printed. Um, now here's one. No, that was a bunch of um, stamping with the stencils. Now you can stamp on the plate over and over again, to, and each stamp you put on will take the paint away from what was underneath there. But you can also transfer that onto another area. So it's a little easier for stamping with, I find, than acrylic paint. It comes out smoother. Uh, that's another stamping and rolling together. You did that one in two pulls? Yeah. yeah um, no, actually, I did. The gray one I did first, so I put it down with the gray paint, put my plant on top, 
and then I don't have the, oh, there it is. Then I took away all of the paint and then I stamped it on a good piece of paper. Did the same thing with this. The blue. Um, Now here's one that I used a leaf. Now the leaf had a little bit too much on it. So see how it's kind of blotchy looking? You're not really getting the fine detail of the veins because there was too much paint on it. Does it dry quickly when it is a nice thin way? Yes, very quickly. So layers. Um, printing off off of the stencil. This is more stamping with the stencil. Same thing. Uh, there's another, there's one, there's the one I did with the uh, gray background. And then I just put a blue over top. Now the one thing, these paints are very transparent so you're going to change your colors so you kind of have to know your color wheel to know what you're going to be getting as far as when you're overlapping but that goes with um uh acrylic paint too when you're using your artist grade um these so this is kind of cool right in here now that's a stencil but I moved the stencil slightly and it made kind of a highlight. So it's, I found that kind of interesting. So I started playing with that and then I started using, look at these. I love these. So if you're playing with stuff and smearing it, it gives it a really cool effect. I loved it. Um, I'm so sorry. I missed the first stream that with this. Love the prints. Yeah. <laughs> Color wheels are very important. I know they're boring sometimes to talk about, but once you know your colors, it's so much easier. Yeah, the smearing was really cool. So I thought, you know, that would be really interesting too. Uh, incorporating that into your uh, prints because you get so many different effects. So here's some green ones that I just was playing with. And I was just turning it and, and pulling it. And combining colors is important too. So, you know, this you can get mud pretty quick if you don't know what colors to use. That's your stencil. Love that stencil. I don't remember what it's called, but I actually cut away the background because that's the one thing I find in this. It's easier to have a mask instead of a stencil like the the um yeah the stencil <laughs> so masks really work well with this paint swirly swirls yeah that was so cool i love that oh there's and then i used a leaf over top And there's, um, you can get, I printed with the green and put it over top of the purple. So then you, when you pull it up, you're going to get the green. Um, here's one. I just uh, did a little bit of extra coloring with uh, colored pencils. Colored pencils work fantastic on this. Because it doesn't leave any kind of buildup of paint 
on your papers. They still feel as smooth as the paper. So you can uh, do prints on them. This one was actually uh, ink. So I put uh, archival ink on this one and it works just great. Yeah, they do. They have more versatility. Um, another thing that works great is tissue paper. Now with tissue paper, you, you have to um, wait till it dries. Um, I don't know if you can see this. See this here? It's a little bit discolored. It's a little, looks almost wet. That's the oil. So I haven't put this between blotter paper yet. So once this is um, soaked up with the blotter paper, then I can use this. And it's translucent still. Uh, that's just a... Taking away the background. And here's um, using both. the Both types of the positive and negative of of the print so um yellow put the plant um, leaf down then rolled over it with a gray took the leaves out printed it and then printed out my um, other leaves on top of it Uh, stamps work great. This is um, rice paper works fantastic. So this is rice paper. And these are just stamps that I used on here. And they worked great. Another kind of, um, these are a little more detailed. You see the veining in the leaves. A little bit more in this one. But you kind of have to play with them and see uh, there's that I think that was um, Bristol see how beautiful the um, color is on Bristol it's much more richer so if you really want a nice deep um, colors Bristol I haven't got any printing paper but Bristol works fantastic um, there's another printing one see a little bit more of the veining in the leaves this one's kind of messed up a bit another one with leaf printing so you just play that's the one thing I found with this is you do have now this is um well, this one's dry now this one's dry and I think that's because it depends on which side you print on because the the other one I showed you where did I put it I think that was on the smoother side so maybe although I did put this under blotting paper afterwards thanks Safia uh, you can get an opaque white also. Um, this is kind of cool. This is an actual hydrange print. So it's a hydrangea. And it actually printed some of the flowers. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, more. Oh, this is the wet strength. This prints really nice. This is wet strength tissue paper. And I don't know if you can see this, but right in the center is one of the very fine, fine script. And it comes out really nice. It doesn't bleed at all either. The color stays where it is, which is nice. Um, this was a white pine. So look at the detail in that. That's a white pine tree limb. 
that I printed. Some more stamps and the negatives of plants. And then I also um, did a stamping into the plate and then also printed it. This is a napkin backing. So it can take, because it's not really wet, wet, it can take your prints out really nicely too. So think about those, because we always throw them out, right? Oh, and you know what I did with this one? I forgot. I actually put the plant down on the paper and took my brayer and rolled on top of this napkin that was over top of the, paper of the plant. The plant had ink on it. So that's how I got this dark stem and leaves. more like there's so many ways you can play with it that now this one had a little bit too much ink see how it's not as detailed it's more blotchy looking because the leaves had too much ink on them oh and this look at this this is a piece of curtain lace curtain So look how fine detail you can get. I think that is just fantastic. You can even see the stitching. Um, so you could take any kind of fabric, lace, uh, op any open weave, crocheted napkin, crocheted, um, you know, those doily things, they would print. This is a real fine lace, so this is what it looks like. See-through. These are cool, too. They will print nice. And more leaves, stamps. Now oh, here's the um, leaves with the plant or the lace. Le leaf prints. More leaf prints. And the colors are vibrant. Look at this. And that's just um, a bunch of stamp on, stamp off. So I can go back over top of these now if I wanted to print something very dark. These are cool too. Dark purples. There's another um, print of a hydrangea and a leaf. This was um, using two colors on my gel plate. So I stamped with the green and then put it on on my plate and rolled it with the orange. And those are leaf prints. More. A bit of that. So you could reuse these. Um, I did get the gold 
and I still have to play with it a bit. It is really pretty. Um, and there is a release agent that you can get so that it releases more gold. Um, I haven't figured out quite the ratio yet. I think there's a little bit of a learning curve on that one. Um, those are those are actually um, petunias. <laughs> Uh, there's one, a lace. There's some more gold. It's quite pretty. I kind of like the um, grungy look of the gold on there. And here's a, a leaf print. This is... Um, rice paper yeah see yeah that's what it is so okay uh, Mariah so this is printed on the shiny side and it's still wet the other one was printed on the rough side so the, the non shiny side in it was dry so you could probably get away with uh, maybe two prints on those. They wouldn't do any more than that. It probably wouldn't dry because it's not going through a whole lot. Um, these are the gold on black. These are pretty, but I have to find out a way of getting more off. If you go on their site, they, they will show you how it's done. I just haven't figured it out. All right, so those are the ones I, I played with. So, I'll put those aside. And I used all sorts of paper. detail you got in the video. Yeah, I, that's what I really liked. Your set has a blender. Did you, yes, uh, the blender is um, great if you want to use it like for painting. Some people like to paint in areas um, instead of using their roller. You can do that. But remember, because of the um, the way it prints fine detail, you will see your brush marks. So you have to use um, either a, a sponge roller, but then what's the point, right? Um, you can also um, use it in your, you have the pigment inks, the blender, you can use it in that for more of a watercolory look. Uh, is your plate a gel press or jelly arts? This is jelly arts. They're both jelly arts. So what I normally do is I work, I work at, on two at a time. So I'll put color down on one and then um, print on this one. Uh, I'm still kind of playing with that. Not sure exactly how I want to uh, go about it. Let's see. Let's do get some yellow here. I think everybody, if you got the um, starter set, yellow comes with the start, starter set. Yellow 
uh, black and red, I believe. And then you get a blue um, pigment. And I always use my spatula, just very little. So with this, this is a uh, nine by 12, I think, something like that. Small amounts. That's all I, I need for this whole plate. And when you're brayering, don't keep your brayer on the plate. Lift it. So you want to lift it. This way it moves the ink around more. And the more you brayer, the more even it's going to get. So over brayering is a good thing. You can't over brayer with this stuff. And you may think, oh, there's not enough paint on it. Believe me, <laughs> there's enough paint on it. Now I can, instead of wiping this off, I can take a and then I can wipe it off. I just use uh, old newspapers to brayer it off. Okay. I like to start light to go to dark. <laughs> um, then let's stick to the greens and blues for this one. So we'll use, I think I have a Yeah. Okay, I have a oxide green. It's a nice green. Now see, if you were using regular acrylic paint, you would be rushing to find a stencil to put on this before it dried. You could go and have a coffee <laughs> and not worry about it. That's what I love about it. You can actually sit and think what you want to do instead of rushing. And that was the one thing I didn't like about um, the gel plate is you had to rush. You had to make sure you had all your papers ready right beside you. <laughs> so you can just go have a chat. <laughs> Do whatever you want. So let's see. I think I'm going... Let's put some of these on. So I have this one. And you can just do this and lift. That's all you need to do. This ink comes up very easily. And I can put that down there. Put down here. We can, let's see what else we got here. We have some masks here. Let's put those on. Now I got some more in there. There they are. I'm not sure whose these are, but I do like them. Put them in different directions. Masks are great too because you can flip them be facing whatever way you want. Okay, and then we'll just take a piece of, this is just butcher paper, untreated butcher paper. So 
and it takes the, you can see it coming up. And I don't have to worry. I don't have to rush. I could leave that on there for the whole day if I wanted to. It's not going to stick to the plate. It's very faint, but you do see it. Okay. Now I can lift these. And there will be enough on there. I could actually leave those aside and use the ink off of them in something else. Okay, so let's, we'll do a double. So I'm going to take this and print this one. So there's the, the first one. So then we take a little bit of the green oxide. And again, small amounts. Don't get too generous because then they don't come out as uh, detailed. Lift your brayer. You don't get the, you know, the glob, the little blobs. You know how you put your paint down and you end up with these little blobs uh, on your print. You don't get that with this. Okay, let's use this. So let's see. We got here. We have some flowers here. And then I can take that and it'll print. Okay. So wipe that off. Now I made these. These are hot glue stencils. <laughs> so we could now you. If you use the smoothest side, so where you know how you go over top, you're going to get multi levels. So if you use the side that sat down on the whatever you were um, gluing it on to, um, that's the best side if you want all of this. You can use that side, you'll just get a different type of print. So I'll show you. So we'll do this side on the bottom and just lightly take here and then we'll do this side over here and I'll show you you'll just get more um, dots and dashes but it's still kind of cool looking so let's put a few of these over here Maybe some of these. That. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Okay, let's let's get this out again. If I just roll, it's going to take more up. OK. 
Okay, and I'm going to leave that green on there. Now, I'm going to get a leaf. Oh, actually, here. This is one of yours too, isn't it? It's still got Akua ink on it from last weekend. So let's put that down. And maybe we'll just put her right over here. I'm just taking the back of my... You could take a barren or whatever. Just put it down there. And it's going to leave ink on it. You can do the same here if you want. Just in a section. Just bits. And then let's take this. And I'm going to print. Uh, let's see. I'm going to print this part. Curly Peter Sand. Celestial Snowshoe. Okay. So I'm going to. Um, where's those? We even have these here. You could print on those. There's just a, a ring. And I just like moving it around. There's your print. Now you don't have to take up the whole print either. You can take off bits. You may want just a, a border. You never know what you're going to get. So this here, if you were to clean this up, you'll still get some. Now you can take a baby wipe and wipe it right off and it'll come right off. Kissing the plate. <laughs> so there's a little bit, but not much. But this is easy to clean off, or you can leave it. I don't seem to worry too much about it. Um, let's see. Let's take some blue. So this one is ultramarine blue. And I can just take this here. If I if I don't want to use my print, I can just take another piece of plastic and roll off the side. You don't have to roll it on your plate. You can roll off the side too. And the same thing goes. Raise your Your roller, 
Okay, and then I can just And if you don't like that, you can take your napkin or whatever you have and um, remove it. Okay. So say you don't like uh, hard edges. Just remove some. Like that. So I'm just reusing what I already had, basically. So this one had some yellow on it. You can pick up areas too. Or slide it slightly and it'll leave a, um, so lay it down and then just slide it and then pick it up. It leaves a really cool mark. Let's see, we have these two. Now these were yellow. Let's see what happens though. You never know. Yellow and might get more of an orange over the pink or um, the blue and yellow would be green. You take things up. Those are cool too. If you can print those off when they start getting really full of uh, different colors, it's really neat. Let's see. I think I want some more flowers in there. Let's put blue in there. You can roll off the side. Put it down. Okay. Now we're getting a pretty good color coordination there. So it's not, not too muddy. Um, These could actually be either part of this one, or you could make a whole new one. Let's see. We've got this here. Let's pull this. See what we get. Sometimes it's hard to tell because it looks so pale on your plate. And then when you pull it, it's like, wow. Um, does it stain the plate? Any or I it pretty well comes up. Um, I used uh, actually that what is it called? Uh, release agent for the gold that you can also put this on if you're finding you're not getting as much of a um all of it released off your plate. If you put some of this on very, very thinly though, and wait five minutes and then print with it, you'll get more ink off your plate. But this also cleans your plate. <laughs> That's what I found. And you don't have to, if you, you use even less than what you would paint. So that's kind of cool on its own. Uh, I'm glad I pulled it and didn't put any more in. So it didn't look like there was much on that plate, but there was actually. So this would make a really nice background for something. 
You could also add more stuff to it later if you wanted to. So let's pull this one. Um, actually, I'll pull this one. Where is it? I want a piece of Bristol. I'm curious if the oils from the ink work to condition the plate as well. I think it does, actually, to tell you the truth. The nice thing about this is you don't have to worry about um, it beading. None of these inks will bead. Um, and actually, I did use, after I had a session with this, these inks, I did try some um, paints, acrylic paints. And they didn't beat as much. So they mu it must be conditioning it. And I just like the fact that you can think about the color, the paper, and the stencil you're going to use. So you're not in a frazzle quickly doing stuff without having to think. Because some, uh, how many times have you done a um, a stencil down or or a paint, and then you've decided, oh, I wish I hadn't used that one, and then you would have to pull it anyway. So, but with these, you got that time. That's what I really like. So see how bright. A little different. See how the blues are a little more intense. So I could go back over top of this with, um, say, more greens. That would be cool. <laughs> uh, need to head off. Kids' bedtime soon. Lovely. Okay. Thanks, Sophia. Um. <laughs> so let's see. Let's try some leaves, some real leaves. So I went in the garden. And we're going to use a Payne's Gray, I think. Right. Hey, Zandra. Very helpful video. I learned about this video while watching piano. Ah, awesome. Thanks for coming. Glad I helped you out. It's something you have to play with. Uh, like anything else, there's always a bit of a learning curve with certain um, mediums. So again, small amounts. Don't want that on there. Sprayer. Now there's a bit of blue on here, but that doesn't matter because this is blue anyways. Let's 
we may as well use this up, right? off very easily on your hands. All right, some leaves. So these are just plain old weeds. So when you're printing with uh, any type of leaf, the best way to um, printed is usually the back because that's where the uh, all the uh, veining shows most of the time and once in a while you will find some that are better on the front than the back um, let's see these are weeds too see how much of a vein structure there is so that's what picks the paint up, is that. Um, usually stiffer or more thicker leaves, like maple leaves. This one's kind of cool. It's got all these bug holes in it. Let's see if it picks it up. I'm going to get rid of the stem. And I'm going to overlap. I really like overlapping because it shows that in, when you print it. You wouldn't think it would, but it does. Then I have some, um, this is some type of weed. I'm not sure what. But I like making a composition when I uh, do these. It's just the way I roll. This is Thalictrum. It's a garden flower. Let's put it down like that. Okay. And I'm going to take. a tablecloth, plastic tablecloth, and I'm just going to do a little bit of, with my hand, just a little roll here and there. Just like that. All right, and then I'm going to take, you may as well make this a nice looking off print. And I just squish it down. And you just make sure you rub in between this, right along the stem, so you can get all that negative area printed up. These are really fun to do. And you don't need anything, any special flowers. 
I don't really do flowers. It's mostly leaves, I find. Just take a peek. See how it's uh, coming up. Okay. So you still have, see how the lacy part of that came through? Now see this here? That's because there's too much. You wouldn't think there'd be too much, but it's because of the paper. It couldn't soak it up quick enough. So it leaves that little wonky doodle thing. But you can see how detailed, you can even see how the paint was laying. Okay, so now I could take these up and lay them down on here. I could actually print this one up here if I wanted to. Or you can just squish it down and print it. Um, Devin has... So, let's see what we can print. We'll use copy paper this time. Let's just show you what type of print you'll get. I like to put a paper on the edges if it doesn't fit all the way so you don't get any more paint on the back. Now I could take this up with the flowers on it like that if I wanted to also. Kathy, did you get the lace yet? No, I haven't uh, gotten it yet. At least not today. Um, I haven't looked today, but yesterday it wasn't here yet. I was hoping because I wanted to try it. <laughs> I'm excited. So there's the print. Isn't that cool? Now we will let's see. Where did I put the other one? I guess we could print this one up on something else. Because I think this is going to be cool. Let's put this one. Let's print it the way that is with the leaves. And on tissue paper. So you'll have the masking of the leaves. Okay, so I'm just going to lift the top part of this and then I'm going to remove the leaf. And then I'm going to put it back down. Mark, 
<laughs> now this was just the, but it's kind of cool. So that was just the Payne's gray. So I could put that on top of something else or even add more to it later. So let's put in orange or magenta. It is Queen Magenta. Let's do some of this. See what see what happens. I'm gonna put it on my plate. And there's a little bit of blue on here. I'm just gonna throw it on. It'll change the magenta a little bit here and there. Where did my roller go? Oh, there it is. Lift. We got some green on this one so we're going to put that down and i'm going to go over why not It had some blue on it, so now we got purple. And what other ones do we have here? This had some yellow on it. Now we could use this and see what happens. Uh, Brayers are never quiet. Crooked. Yeah, that's true. Means they've been working. At least here. So we got a lot of magenta, a little green came up, a little bit of yellow in there. Now we could put some blue on there and make it a little bit more purpley. So let's get out.
Prussian blue. You can mix your colors too. Uh, I would suggest mixing them on the side first on a piece of um, plastic of some sort and then put them on the plate because you want to use a palette knife to mix them together. Some on this. Let's see. You could use this as your um, for rolling too. And I could take one of these Use it as a stamp or get your stamps out. Okay. It will print. This is so pretty. plate out too and find other colors you want. So if I were to use yellow, probably yellow. And put some yellow on by itself. Let's clean this. So I've just got a plastic um, top of something and I have an area where I have green or yellow that I can roll. And you want to make sure you clean your brayer. Just wipe it. Or if you have another brayer for different colors, that's good too. Whatever's, you know, your preference. Well, there's a white one. But it doesn't take much to clean these. And I, I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> not in a hurry. I have to keep telling myself that. It's funny. See if we can do this. Uh, 
And then I got yellow on there. I could put it here. Yellow on there. Smidgen on there. I think I'm going to roll it on the pad here. See what happens. And then I'm going to put it down. Take a piece of paper. Or do I need to? Wait a minute. I got an idea. Mm -hmm. This is the neat thing is you can try so many things out and not worry about rushing. So I have big stencils of circles. And will that work or do I want dots? No, I don't think I want that. Just thinking pattern wise, you don't want to get all the same um, pattern. Let's just pull it and see what we get here. Some of them work, some of them don't. You just have to play. And that's how you learn. Um, jelly printing isn't uh, lay down some paint and each pull is going to be fantastic. They, they're not. I would say 30% would be fantastic. The other is always a learning thing. This has been a great, thank you so much. I have ordered some other ink colors, speedball plate, it's a different printing experience. Must get ready for it. All right, thanks for coming, Mariah. Hope you're. Uh, Gonna have a fantastic uh, printing session playing with these. They are a lot of fun. Well, that's kind of cool. So that's the old paint from previous poles that was on the leaf. So don't forget till you reuse your leaves because you will get the paint off of those too which is cool. So this one's going to be neat because it's going to have um, a bunch of blue and green. So do we have one we could put that on or do we want to print that by itself? Hmm. Let's print it by itself, I think. Or we could leave that and add other things around it. Maybe this one would be a good one for tissue. Because then we could cut the tissue to whatever we want. So this is just regular tissue that you would put in packaging for gifts and stuff like that. So that turned out good. So I can use this in another Thanks, Devin. Yeah, put in other people's uh, channels for sure. You guys are playing with stuff. I'd love to see what you're doing. 
going to try this on here just to see what happens. For me, I love botanicals, so this is my go-to. <laughs> and then you can always, look at that not pretty so then I could take a pencil and do more of a detailed drawing on this that would be pretty so then I could take this one up or oh, this one's going to be cool because it has all kinds of different colors so let's do that one in well, let's try it on a piece of copy paper. But it's just amazing the texture is what I can't get over. <laughs> How much texture shows. So you could get any, all kinds of fabric. Um, whenever I get my... Um, Happy Mail package from Sandra. I'm going to do the lace. She sent me some lace. Can't wait to try that out. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? So put your crazy background colors no doesn't matter what and keep your old leaves that you've printed and reprint them that's so cool I have a little bit left on there I'm gonna just leave it Let's um, just put a bunch of color on. I'm going to use my old stencils that I've been using because they still have a bunch of color on them. Multicolors. So you never know what you're going to get. this one and here comes Chloe what are you doing Chloe They're just so fun to um, play with when you reuse them. There's, you're just taking bits and pieces of color off of those because they don't dry because they're on your stencil. So you can use them later on. <laughs> There's no limit of time when they're on your stencil because they never dry. Um, then we can... Take some yellow. Some yellow. Some whirly doos. Hmm. 
What other leaves did I use? I'm going to use some of these. Let's use some of these, see what we get. That one's got a big stem. This one can go there. And put this one on. No, I think that's too small. You want fairly big. Actually, these um, masks I have here, they would work. We used them already, so just put it over top of this one. Okay. And we'll use, let me wipe my hands first. And I'm going to use, I want a big piece of paper. I have to get another piece of paper here. Let's print this one. Just massage the leaf so you get all the background up. Oh, beautiful. We'll see. You never know how they're going to turn out. So it's kind of a, you know, Let's put that one on copy paper. See, I've been leaving this and I'm not worried because it's not going to dry. So I can take my time, think about it. What do I want to do? Put this one on. Let's put this over here. Yeah. Kathy, those stencils are those flower masks. Yes. The, these ones? Yeah, they're, they were a flower mask, but I cannot, I have no idea who made them. They came in a set of three. So that one, this one, and that one. I don't know who they're who made them. That's cool. Mm, neat colors. And I just look this up. Oh, this one's gonna be cool. Yes. 
But the more you use them, the more colors you're going to get off of them. These uh, leaves. The only thing to remember is find leaves that have a fairly um, the veins stick out at the back. Isn't that, isn't that cool? These would make really awesome uh, lily pads if you want to do a painting. So you could cut those out and put them on. That would be awesome. Thanks, Martha. Yeah, those are my favorites. I love those colors. That and, um, oh, that's cool too. I like it so that you can even see how they overlap or folded. It's so detailed. Is there anything you guys want me to do or try? Let me know. I'm just going to pat this down to see what kind of mark I get. You could do this too. You could just put the plant down and then just take the print from the leaf, like a, like a print from a stamp. And then leave them on there if you want to um, do your other colors on top of it. You could do that too. You just can't roll over these because they'll just cling to your roller. Let's see. Could do this. Let's see. No, no. Let's try this. A few dots. And a little bit of green. Oh, here's still have some stuff on there. We could just put that in there. Yep. Oh, stuck. Okay, time to. But I could just do this. Have you tried the Akua liquid pigment bottle in the same way? Uh, yep. It's, um, there's not a whole lot of difference. It's just a little more um, fluid. But you could use the pigment as, um, put it in a, Something that you could write it, write with it too. Very, very subtle. It's pretty though. Um. Yellow one. 
two. You just there's a little bit of blending medium that you can put with it. If you like it really thick, you can use there is a um, what do you call it? Paste. Let's see. I'll put some flowers in here. Here's a um, hydrangea. So you can put, you can print with these. You just have to smush them down. can take a paper or something and just don't put it down too far that you're taking up your print. Like that. I don't know if this would print. Let's... And let's see, what else can we do? Maybe some red. Magenta. Hi, Z. Thanks for popping in. dog's been down here. <laughs> it's full of hair. I don't want hair in my thing. Oh, bugger. Some dots. You could probably use a sponge too if you know if you wanted dots. Um, let's see, I'm gonna move this over a little bit and just put a few dots. In there. So it'd be more purple. I could take this because it's purple, put them over here. I 
that. All right, let's try that now. Uh, you could write in this too if you wanted to, or get a stamp that's cut. Um, writing in it. And I have some seed stuff in there, so they're going to print white, but that's fine. I think that was a Donna Downey's um, stencil. One of her very old ones. Very old ones. Um, let's see. Bubbles, DD061. That's what it's called, but I don't own it. Here it is. Uh, yeah, Donnie Downey. Donna Downey. Now, see how the. You can print your flowers. Isn't that cool? Let's see what we can do with this one. I just love this stuff. I, I like it because I can take the time to figure out what I want to do. I'm just, that's just how I roll. I like, I love to plan things, to study things. I'm not one to be um, real quick. I, I'm terrible at intuitive. <laughs> you know how uh, so many people, they're so good at it. They just let it flow. Like, no, my intuitive takes hours. <laughs> I can do it, but it doesn't take um A short amount of time. <laughs> I can't help it. Here we go. So just awesome. Even though that's wild, like with all kinds of texture and colors, you could take um Pan pastels, color pencil, watercolor probably would work. And emphasize or throw back some areas. You could also put on top with this. So let's see. I'm going to throw this down. Just. Roll on a bunch of color in my hands. Let her let let it do whatever it's going to do. Is it? Sometimes these work out. Sometimes they don't. But they're kind of fun to do when you're ending your session of whatever. You're trying to clean up your stencils a little bit. Throw down your stuff. See what comes about. Let's see if we can. make a mess but you'll never know unless you start trying sometimes these turn out sometimes they don't 
kind of have to see what happens. <laughs> I'm just going to take a piece of paper, print that up. And it is. And sometimes they're very surprising because you're, you're thinking, uh, I don't have a, lo a lot of, of um, ink on there. But it's surprising how much comes up. Like, look. So I could take a pen and finish this off here. And it didn't look like there was much ink on there, but there was. You could do that with um, daisies, pretty well any uh, flower that you can smush down. It doesn't take much. Um, and then you just have to uh, Take your baby white. And it just cleans right off. And the oils from the Akua ink, I'm pretty sure it helps the plate. It cleans if you were using it for uh, acrylic, it cleans all the acrylic off of there really easily. So if you're finding you're having problems with your jelly plate, just make sure not to put your cool ink on a wet jelly plate, though, because your cool ink will stiffen. Checking in. Hey, Deb. Oh, they're up. They're fat. They're so much fun. And they're so economical as far as how much you use. They're worth their uh, money. They're not that expensive. I was really quite pleased. So... Let's just lift this. I'm just going to lift it on the back of this one. See? It's dry. Just lift whatever was left there. And then I can wipe this one down. Doesn't take any effort in cleaning it either, which is nice. Now we could try a um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, image transfer, if you want. Did one when I first got them, but haven't done any since. So we could try that if you're interested. Could use Payne's gray. And this is nice too because you don't have to worry about time. <laughs> How many times have you? Ah, I don't have enough time to find my image or get my paper. <laughs> or you leave it on too long, you leave it on too little. I don't know about you, but that's my problem. <laughs> I always forget something. And then I have to go find it, and by the time I come back, it's dry. So let's... Okay. 
Let's see if we can find an image worthy. Just gonna pull a book, see what I can find. All right, I have a couple of these ones here. Let's see. Don't know if this one will work. A thicker paper. Try a couple and then if not we'll try cosmopolitan so i have this one here it's a little bit of a shinier paper so i'm not putting too much and i don't know being that it's um ink totally different thing than your regular stuff. I have no idea on how long to keep it on there before it transfers. I want to make sure I got all of the wrinkles or pulls out. Too. I'm gonna I'm just gonna peek. Hmm. No, I don't think so. I think it was too thick. So let's pull that. I think it needs to be really thin, thin. Let's see a Cosmo. I think the cheaper ones were the, are the best for um, I know black and white is usually the best, but there's not a whole lot of black and white. usually want a fairly high contrast too. Oh, 
we'll just try this one. Oops. It's a black one. Let's see. We'll see if it works. This is a Cosmo. Because I guess it, you know, I don't know. It did work the first time I tried it. Just doesn't look like it will. And there's bubbles. See, this is shiny paper, so I don't think it's going to work on that. I'll just throw it on here and see what happens. Sometimes you can't even see that it's worked. You'd have to play with it. That was Payne's gray. Let's see. If, let's see. Thicker piece. Oh, there's one. It's not bad. Try this one. Sometimes you do need a uh, marbly paper, though. That's true, Deb. Very true. So I don't know whether it's a good thing to leave it on longer or shorter. See, I think this is too much. I think it needs to be really, really, really thin. Hey, Colleen. No, see? Too thick. It doesn't show at all. So, I would say, well, I haven't done a lot of it, but I would say it's not the greatest for transfers because um, it's not reacting the way your paint does to it just sits there because of uh, the um, the glossiness of the of the page I have one book just wait a minute I have one book that has matte paper so I'm going to check that one We'll see. Okay. These are... I got these. This is R. That's the book. It's huge. Here's one. And it's matte paper. Let's see if this works. Mm, let's do black. Just to see if the black is in any better. Like as far as intensity.
You want it as um, even as possible. Keep rolling. Let's put this guy on. Let's see what we get. a little bit more. Let's see. Still very pale. So it's not the greatest. I would say no. I wouldn't bother with it. If you're having success with your um, other prints, I would do that. But they're fun. They are fun. I'm just going to use this up. Let's just print these guys. We just hold your horses. Here's a rose leaf. Let's try. Is that got some? Ah, oh, that's got thorns on it. Don't put it on your daily plate. Here's a peony leaf. Put right there. And let's see what happens. Well, I know. Almost done. No, come on. Oh, wow. Look at the detail in these guys. Awesome. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Almost looks like a, a negative. <laughs> it's so cool. All right. Well, let's see. Let me go over here for a minute. We'll see what we've done. A minute, Chloe.
right. these out, use them as backgrounds, it almost looks like a skeleton key, leaf. So these are tissues that you can use. And that's just a clean off. They're still kind of cool. These are cool. I really like those. That's the negative of that one. These are cool. Or negative. So any of these could be used in um, collage, or like I said, you can paint these out and use just bits and pieces of them. Because you can use acrylic paint on top of this. So that's the one good thing about it, because that really surprised me, because typically... You can't use an acrylic over an oil, but the, with this, you can. This one's really pretty. Tissue, that's pretty, greens. That one's kind of pretty too. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it inspired you and gave you some info and uh, helps you decide whether this is something you would like to try out. It's waterproof once dry. Yes, it is. You cannot move it once it's dry. Yeah, we tried that already. Yeah, because when I first thought, well, if it's clean up with water and soap, is it going to move once, you know, you add something else to it. No, nope, we tried it and it does not move. So another bonus. I know, sweetheart. Can you write on it? Yep. Yep. You can use colored pencil. Um, here. pencil you can use marker on it. it it goes into the paper this is a pen oh I guess you can't well see pen works um markers yes you will be able to use markers let's see there's a sharpie marker 
no skipping. Doesn't clog up your, you know how you're always scared it's gonna clog things up. Can't move it, so it so still soaks right into your paper. So it's not gonna sit on top and just pool. So yeah, you can draw on it. You could probably even use, um, let's see, marker. Alcohol marker. Yep. Try. Because it doesn't have any kind of buildup on the surface. So your paper still feels the same as it did before you printed. So you could probably even use a pastel on there. Let me see. Yep, look at that. Still got tooth. Wow, that's oh, that's. Interesting. Let me see if I can take it away. Very interesting. So this sticks to probably the a little bit of oil on the pastel. Sticks to the oil so it stays a little more. That's interesting. Glad you asked. Very interesting. That could have possibilities. And you're right, Devin. <laughs> it seems to have enough. This is just uh, pastels are different. Um, I'll show you for a minute. Uh, depending on your pastel that you're using. Now this is Rembrandt pastels, so it's sticking to that too. Yeah, they do. Um, I'm thinking, this is interesting. Because there's a little bit, the obviously be a little bit of oil sitting on the top of this because this was done today. Chloe, I'll be there in a minute. Little. So that stays in place. No. Go on. Go. Go. Go see Mike. Colleen, I signed up for a wonderland. Yeah, I'm not sure what the binder is. It's a secret in the pan pastels. But I have done full portraits of um, using pan pastels as the base on copy paper. It's a fantastic pastel if you're interested in pastels. Um, I myself uh, mostly use it for um, portraits but 
it is so pigmented it's doesn't um, have to have too much tooth um, wonder if it will stick as much tomorrow well let me see i've got other older ones here where did i put them okay this is an older one pretty darn good this is about two two weeks old you can take some of it away but not all of it so it must be still going into that there must be um, some sort of and it's smoother look Look how smooth it goes on. Versus, this is the same paper. So you can see it grainy there. This goes on smoother. Yeah, you can see the grain in that one of the paper, but you can't really in that. So that's very interesting, very. I might be playing with that more. I do like that. Huh. Yeah, it blends beautifully on this. Ooh, I think that's maybe what I'll be doing next. Instead of colored pencil, why not pastel? Ooh, I'll get my um, soft tools. Yep. The things that develop, eh? <laughs> You never know until you experiment. It's so fun, guys. Try things. It's just paper. And like this, sometimes you find some fantastic um, new ways of doing things. So I'll probably play with some of these. And uh, I'll post some of them. Um, I'll probably, uh, I don't know if you the uh, members do you want some of these prints because i can load some for you if you're interested yeah it's fun great fun You want some? Okay. All righty. What colors do you want? Do you want some of the multicolors? Do you want just the blue ones like that? Or I don't know. What colors do you want? I have a ton. Stuff like this. Botanical ones. Or do you like stuff like that? I can mix them up if you want. I can make a, a folder and put about six of them in if you want. And then you can play with them. Uh, yeah.
Yes, the botanical ones and the one with the bubbles. The bubbles. With the bubbles. What one was that? Mm. This one? Circle stencil. This one? <laughs> I've got lots of bubbles. Circle stencil. I want did I do it in this session, or are you thinking of something I did before? Those are the bubble. That's the bubble stamp or the bubble stencil. Yes, that one. They're all right. Whatever you decide. All right, I will uh, pick a bunch and then I'll. I'll put them in the uh, community members page. So you'll give me um, a few hours though, because it'll take that to scan them and put them up. So they should be up by tonight. So if you're interested in receiving these, you can uh, join the membership here on YouTube or Patreon. We have both or I have both. They're both the same, but uh, some people prefer Patreon over YouTube. So I will put those up for you and then you can use them however you want. <laughs> it doesn't take too long. It's just I gotta go feed Chloe. And you know, Chloe, she demands her food on time. All right. Well, I'll let you guys go before my dogs go on strike. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. So I'll let you guys go and you have a fantastic day. And we'll see you on Thursday. Or no, Tuesday. Have a good one, everyone. <laughs>